Hi everyone, welcome to Draftscapes. I'm Chris Tuccio. Um, in this video, I thought actually I'd do something different. I thought every 20 or 30 videos, uh, what I'd do is I'd grab stuff from my bookshelves uh, that I've accrued over the years of being a landscape designer and uh, professor of horticulture, and I'd showcase them to you, uh, why I like them, uh, how I have came to obtain them, and how they helped me and may help you in your landscape or garden design uh, career. So the first one, actually the first two uh, that I'll show you actually often located right by my side and you can see them in the videos. Um, the first one, very personally significant to me, it's uh, Trees in the Urban Landscape by uh, Professor Peter Trowbridge and Dr. Nina Bassick. So this is personally significant to me because both Peter and Nina uh, were professors of mine teaching my Woody Plants classes uh, as well as Peter uh, did a number of different design studios that I was under while I was an undergrad at Cornell and you know they're very fabulous instructors absolutely wonderful people and they really hit knocked it out of the park with this text basically it's anything you want to know with doing ornamental trees in the urban uh, landscape so uh, for difficult urban sites there's a lot of different illustrations good case scenarios and you know it's a collaborative effort which is so nice about it is you know often as a professor of horticulture uh, at my my college uh, you know I'm trained as a landscape architect and so I feel often this tug of uh, am I more aligned to landscape architecture or more aligned to horticulture? And within this text, it, it really shows me that I don't have to be. You know, we have a professor of horticulture, professor of landscape architecture coming together to do this wonderful book and uh, the nice thing about it is there's uh, you know lots of different types of case scenarios and uh, examples of how you can actually uh, implement these similar strategies whether it's near infrastructural elements near sidewalks near roadways uh, to ensure that the plants uh, both have an ornamental value and are thriving physiologically so you know the the book is very valuable to me and I, I love uh, that I've kept it over all these years um, what I'll do too uh, just for full disclosure I'll actually go through some downsides to all these books so one of the things uh, obviously about this book is you know it's very specific to the urban environment and trees it's a very specific book so you know if you primarily do garden design and you're dealing with herbaceous perennials and you know woody shrubs you're not, not going to want this book it's not going to be very valuable to you um, how or if you're just doing sort of suburban residential development uh, with very few trees in it you know it's really probably not the, the text for you what I would suggest is see if your local library your local university has it check it out uh, you'll really like the illustrations you'll like some of the content but you know in terms of purchasing uh, probably not something that that you're gonna do I will say to all the books that I'll list I'll make sure uh, that I put a link uh, in the description below so if you want to you can grab them also. So the next one is also uh, again a very personally significant uh, text to me and that's uh, Leaving the Land by Douglas Unger. So this actually was nominated for the Pulitzer Prize in 1984 and it's very different for all of the other works that you're going to see today because it's a work of fiction. So what I tell students in my landscape design class, class often is that we talk about landscapes uh, visually a lot, you know, how they physically look, are they aesthetically pleasing, do they look nice, but there is so much more to being a landscape designer and landscape architect than just the physical. There's the social, there's the cultural, there's the historical. Uh, our human tie to the landscape over the years is extremely important and as landscape architects we get to create that or at least have an effort in establishing that through the years and so what Douglas Unger did, does is he paints a really beautiful some somewhat tragic story uh, of a main character Marge uh, who has a farm in the Midwest and you see the change over the years when uh, you know corporate farming takes over uh, and the distance that these individuals have from the land over time and so you know this modification or changing landscape that is the central element of the book is very valuable from the designer uh, and it's painted in a very nice but somewhat tragic way about us not losing our relationship to understanding the land that we grow up in or the land that we uh, design in. So from the social or emotional um, evolution of a designer I think that this book will be very valuable to you you know it's it's a quick read it's not that long um, but 
you know, from the standpoint of understanding why we do what we do and the impact that we can have as landscape architects, uh, leaving the land is really a beautiful text. In terms of downsides, you know, obviously the big thing is it's it's more of a agricultural uh, discussion of you know particular Midwest farm and the changes it goes through, and it's also fiction. So, you know, if you're looking just for a, a resource on how to do something uh, from a professional standpoint, this isn't it. And if you're looking for something that's more in the urban environment rather than uh, sort of the Midwest. Again, this story is probably not going to interest you. I still think it's worth a read. It's a very fabulous book. Uh, the prose are terrific, but again, maybe not for everyone. This next book is basically for anybody that knew of it before they looked at this channel. You probably understand that this channel, if it has an authorship, it is akin to the Landscape Graphics book by Grant Reed. So uh, this, this book, 2002, it came out, which actually wasn't that long ago. It seems like it's an older book than this, but uh, my copy obviously is, is pretty um, torn up from me using it so much. Um, but it is the the one standard book for developing beautiful landscape plans, sections, perspectives. It is the reason I created this channel because I feel like we need to take this information and put it into some sort of a new format um, along with my own sort of spin on the content. And it really gives you a breakdown technically of everything that you want to know to draw beautiful landscapes. The type of tools that you need, how to draw different plan symbols, how to create perspective sketches. It is the, the be all end all in my opinion of landscape graphics. Also, if you're new to the channel, I actually have an article that I wrote uh, that I found to be very valuable where I break down the six essential books for landscape designers um, where I showcase the skills every designer should have, uh, the, the main primary six of them, and which specific book within that realm um, you should pick up uh, to assist with that skill. And of all the books I'm showing today, this Landscape Graphics by uh, Grant Reed is the only one that is on that list. And obviously it's akin to the being able to actually draft landscapes. So, you know, a beautiful book. You will not be, be um, uh, wrong in picking it up. You, you won't second guess yourself. It'll pay for itself in less than a year if you use it absolutely perfect book for anybody that's interested in doing landscape design even on the side not even as a profession just if you're interested in it you want to draw some some landscapes uh, think about picking up this book it, it's really worth it um, the downsides to it if there is one is even 2002 uh, when this book was published AutoCAD was there you know people were starting to do computerized rendering uh, in in sort of rudimentary ways but it really now you know landscapes took off so uh, having a, this um, is more like having a piece of history because everyone wants to do beautiful landscape renderings in Photoshop, SketchUp, Vectorworks, AutoCAD. So not a lot of people draw landscapes anymore. Um, so if you're interested in just those really, you know, virtual reality or uh, beautifully photoshopped renderings and you're not interested in drawing landscapes, obviously this book isn't for you. But for, for those that really want to uh, tie back into the slower way and the process of, of drawing and, and develop a love for it, definitely pick this one up. Okay, so the next one is um, really a professional guide and it's uh, Becoming a Landscape Architect by Kellyanne Foster. This is the newest one on the list. Um, so uh, this was 2009 and basically you know it, it, it's a catch-all uh, for what you would expect if you're going into the industry. So it's not how to design and it's not why to design but it's what brought people to landscape architecture, what it is, what you might do day to day if you are a landscape architect, it's interviews with landscape architects in the field about what they do. And so it's a really fabulous resource on the educational requirements um, as well as the professional skills needed to become a landscape architect. And it also goes through the, the breadth of the industry. So there's interviews with you know, private design studios that do public parks or win competitions. There's interviews with uh, people that do designs for the National Park Service. There's even boutique garden designers. So you know, if you're interested in becoming a landscape architect or thinking about landscape architecture and you want to see the, the different things that are available to you, you know, this is a really fabulous text. In terms of downsides, um, you know, if you're only interested in 
uh, garden design or you're only interested in plants like uh, plant propagation, greenhouse work, nursery work, you don't actually want to do design, obviously this book isn't for you. Uh, if you want to do more architectural stuff, this isn't for you. It's a very specific book in landscape architecture. So if you're coming to the channel and you know you want to do landscape design, it's probably for you. Um, but you know, you never know. All right, so the last one is the oldest. So we go from the newest to the oldest on the list for today. Um, and that is one that actually I picked up as, as a graduate student, as required reading uh, when I was doing uh, urban studies. And it is The Image of the City by Kevin Lynch. This was published in 1960. Uh, Professor Lynch was at um, uh, uni uh, Harvard University at the time. And basically what he did was he developed a a way in understanding cities, understanding environments, let's just say environments, but it was cities, in a really new and interesting way. And he created the, what are called mental maps, these cognitive maps, assuming that you are dropped into this metropolis or this urban center, what things would catch your eye? What areas would you be drawn to? Uh, assuming that you didn't know where you were or where you were supposed to go. And so what he does is he draws these beautiful bubble diagrams to showcase these things about circulation, about paths, about nodes, about focal points, very conceptually oriented. The reason that it's an interesting book and an important book is We've, we now see in all phases of, of different types of design, architecture, landscape architecture, urban planning, these bubble diagrams, these bubble node diagrams becoming extremely prominent. And it was Kevin Lynch in this text that really developed the, um, the language of those. And so, you know, from the standpoint of garden design or landscape design, it's probably not going to be right up your alley. But if you're interested in how people use the urban environment, uh, you know, definitely pick it up. It's worth the read, both as a historical artifact and to conceptualize how people psychologically experience space. Uh, I know it sounds abstract, but it's a very uh, fundamental way in which designers can design from. In terms of downside, obviously it's the age of the book. You know, this was done in 1960. So over the course of the, the past 60 years, you know, the way in which we use urban environments has changed dramatically. So, you know, you won't find a, a lot of information on new technologies and how they affect the landscape condition. But um, the, the diagrams themselves, how to think about landscapes, and some of the case studies that he goes over are extremely valuable. So worth picking up. Um, so those are the five for, for today and, you know, in the next few videos, um, you know, to come, uh, I'll do others. Um, but really, these are really great books. Um, if you like any of them, uh, I'll click a link uh, uh, below. You can check them out or just go to your local library, see if they have them uh, or your local university. Hopefully they do. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you later.